Well, it was October of uh, 1781 that the uh, British forces under the command of General Charles Cornwallis uh, found themselves under siege here in Yorktown. Uh, they were under siege by the combined forces of the American and French armies. Now facing this dire situation and imminent surrender, uh, General Cornwallis, of course, made one last ditch effort here to cross the York River uh, into Gloucester Point. He was hoping, of course, to evade capture. And on the night of October 16th, he intended to move his troops across the river by boat. And, uh, well, the plan met with failure. Uh, as Cornwallis himself described here, saying, but at this critical moment, the weather being from being moderate and calm changed to the most violent wind of sto st storm of wind and rain. It drove all the boats, some of which had troops on board down the river. It was soon evident that the intended passage was impracticable, and the absence of the boats rendered it equally impossible to bring back the troops that had passed, which I ordered about two in the morning. Well, October 17th, the next day, was decision was made to uh, surrender uh, at that point. Now today, uh, of course, we have uh, bridges to cross uh, the river, uh, but not so at that time. Uh, the surrender of about 8,000 men took place on October 19th then here at Yorktown. Now, when hearing of this surrender, uh, it said British Prime Minister Frederick North exclaimed, Oh God, it's all over. Well, in effect, it was over at that point for the British control over the 13 North American colonies. Of course, uh, terms of, of that were not uh, finalized yet for some time. But essentially, here at Yorktown, that was the, kind of the, the, the beginning of the end uh, at that point of British occupation control here of the colonies. And a new nation of the United States at that point was born. Well, if the British Army, my brethren, had been able to cross over the York River that night, the outcome would have certainly been much different. If the British Army had escaped to potential freedom at Gloucester Point, they could have, of course, evaded capture, and bondage could have possibly given way to freedom. Well, what seemed possible that night gave way to the impossible, as a great storm arose and thwarted their plan. Such are the trials of life, my brethren. This is the plight of man. What seems possible many times can become the impossible when the storms of life come our way. Now it's one thing, of course, to be physically separated from the potential of freedom by a river caught up in a storm. But more importantly, and dangerous with eternal consequences, is to be spiritually separated from the freedom by the storm of sin. See, the sin in our lives separates us from a holy and just and righteous God. And without the freedom that God provides, we are bound in sin, stuck in our sin. While the freedom that God gives, it gives us access and entrance in God's kingdom. And the place, one might say, on the other side of the river. It's the salvation that comes um, by grace through faith, the forgiveness of sin. Of course, where there is this forgiveness and where the penalty of sin has certainly been removed. Now, we see in Mark's Gospel account, chapter 10, starting in verse 25, we find Jesus speaking about how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And really because this man has set his hope on worldly things. And scripture says this about the apostles here. It says they were astonished out of measure saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Jesus looked upon them and saith, with men it is impossible, but now with God, for with God all things are possible. My brethren, all things are possible with our God. All things because it's God who does the work. He himself. 
God brings the saving grace from sin by faith in Jesus Christ his Son. And Jesus said, as recorded in John's Gospel, count chapter 14, starting at verse 6, he says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, he should have known my Father also. From henceforth you know him and have seen him. Well, my brother, Jesus is certainly the only way to the other side. From the bondage of sin, with no way out, to the side of freedom and salvation. See, the Apostle Paul writes to the young man Timothy, recorded in 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, in verse 5. He says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Well, my brother, Jesus bridges the gap between the, between the separation of our sin, our separation that's caused us sin, separates us from God, and through the salvation found alone in Jesus Christ, we are united then with God, saved by grace through faith. Paul writes 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting verse 17. He says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that ye be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Well, my brother Jesus is, is described in the scriptures as the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he has a kingdom. And his kingdom is here and now. See, Luke's Gospel account, chapter 17, starting in verse 20, records a time when the Pharisees wanted to know, asking Jesus about the timing of the coming of God's kingdom. And scripture says, when he had, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said to them, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, what he, here it is, or lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So my brother, if you've come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, your Lord, the kingdom of God is within you. And you certainly receive salvation. You have entered God's kingdom spiritually. And someday in eternity, you will enter God's physical kingdom, the kingdom of God. It's the new Jerusalem. The apostle John was given a revelation by God where John says this, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Well, my brother, and these words are certainly, most certainly true and faithful. Jesus, the mediator between us, a sinful people, and a holy and just God. Now, without Jesus, we'd be like Cornwallis and the British troops, without a hope to escape. The freedom found on the other side of the river, within sight, but not within grasp. My brother, and the freedom that from sin found in Jesus. Jesus is faithful and true. 
It's available to you right now. My brother, don't put this off. If you've not come to a saving faith in Jesus, don't put this off any longer. For one day, Jesus will return to gather his people. Nobody knows but the Father when that day will come. But even tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Don't set your hope on worldly treasures of this world. They are temporary, only temporary, my brethren. Set your hope on Jesus Christ, the Savior, your Lord, who paid the penalty for your sin and mine on the cross. He suffered for our sin. He died, was buried. He rose again, alive now, seated at the right hand of Father, so that in him we would have newness of life, reborn. We are in righteousness in Jesus Christ. That, my brethren, is eternal. And I leave you with these words of Jesus to take heed of these words of Jesus while you still have time on earth to make this so important decision. And it's found in Luke's Gospel, chapter account, uh, chapter 16, starting verse 19. Jesus tells this story. He says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dog came and licked his sores. And it came to pass, the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died, he was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise receive Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf affixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Oh, well, my brethren, have a blessed day in the Lord. And again, if you've not come to the saving faith in Jesus Christ, your Lord where you submit to following him, you commit yourself to his ways, for you find your life in him. Your new life is in him. That's your real life. It's found in him. It's by giving up this old life. The scripture says this old life bound to sin. We give up that old life, come to Jesus Christ, our Lord. We submit to him. We follow him. We receive salvation, freedom, redemption, righteousness, sins penalty dealt with forgiveness of sin we enter God's spiritual kingdom someday to inherit the eternal kingdom as well amen we'll have a blessed day and Lord God willing we'll talk again soon amen